Illegal crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border fell in October. It was the first drop in three months, but apprehensions are still at historically high levels. Data released Tuesday by U.S. Customs and Border Protection show there were more than 188,000 migrant arrests last month. That's a 14 percent decrease from September. CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez joins me now from Washington. Camilo, why the drop? Good evening, John. Well, Border Patrol has recorded a reduction in illegal crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border across demographics. They saw a drop in apprehensions of migrants from several countries and of single adults, families with children, and unaccompanied minors, John. But the most notable decrease occurred among Venezuelan migrants. In October, about 30,000 Venezuelan migrants entered Border Patrol custody. That's a 46 percent drop from September when more than 50,000 Venezuelans entered Border Patrol custody. That was a monthly record. And this has coincided with the Biden administration's decision, John, to start deportation flights, direct deportation flights to Venezuela for the first time in U.S. history. And Biden administration officials certainly believe that that is the reason why we have seen this dramatic drop, particularly among Venezuelan migrants. They believe that while only a small fraction of Venezuelans are being deported on these flights, they have been able to send a message of deterrence across mm. the region and to convince migrants from Venezuela to stay put wherever they are. But arrests still remain historically high. So yes. what are some of the other major factors keeping these numbers up? Well, the reason that migration levels are still at historically high levels, John, is because the fundamental dynamics of these issues are still there. They have not been mitigated significantly. The push and pull factors that drive migration and that have fueled these unprecedented levels of crossings since President Biden took office are still there. You still have this widespread economic crisis and repressive government in Venezuela. You still have a political issue and crisis in Haiti. And you have other push factors in countries in Central America and in the broader region of Latin America. And you also have the fact that only a small number of Venezuelan migrants are actually being deported. And officials told me that that deterrence effect from these deportation flights could become more limited in the future once Venezuelan migrants learn that the risk of being deported is not very large. And so that is still a concern for U.S. officials. And we have to remember, John, that this is just not a crisis about Venezuelan migrants. U.S. officials have actually been recording sharp increases in arrivals of what they call extracontinental migrants, John. These are migrants from places like Africa, India, Russia, and even China who are journeying across the globe, flying to South America, crossing multiple countries to get to the U.S.-Mexico border. And that is a very concerning trend for the Biden administration. Before I let you go, Camillo, uh, a, a bipartisan group, you've been reporting on this. There's a bipartisan group of senators discussing yes. potential um, policy changes at the border. What can you tell us about that? And is there any chance that this might be any better than all the other bipartisan efforts that have not gone anywhere? Well, that's the key question, John. A group of Democratic, Republican, and independent senators are right now negotiating a potential deal on border and asylum policy. It is limited to that issue, not to a broader comprehensive package on, for example, dealing with the undocumented population here. And while obviously, as you mentioned, Congress has not passed a significant change to the immigration system since 1996, 27 years ago, there are several reasons, John, why this could be different. The first one is that it is taking place in the context of President Biden's national security package, which includes aid to Israel, Ukraine, and border security money. And Republicans, John, have been saying that they will not pass any additional aid to Ukraine unless they get border policy changes. So that is a big factor. And the other factor here, John, is that, as you know, the Biden administration and the White House are under intensifying pressure politically, not just from Republicans, but from Democratic leaders in New York, Chicago, and elsewhere, to limit the number of people entering the U.S. So there's this political pressure, in addition to the fact that Republicans are conditioning aid to Ukraine 
to concrete policy changes at the border. And Senator Sinema told me last week, the independent from Arizona, John, that she believes that there is widespread recognition among Democrats and Republicans that something needs to be done to address what she called a porous border. Widespread recognition, but the solution is Turkey as always. Camilo Montoya Galvez, thanks so much. Thanks, John.